All right, all right. I know it's a little late, but hey, what, what's going on with UCLA hoops? After I talked all that nonsense yesterday about who's going to leave and who's not, things actually happened with the portal closing. Let's talk about it on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Locked On UCLA podcast. I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer. Thanks for tuning in and making this your first listen each and every day. It's free where we get your podcast, and it's available on YouTube. So like, comment, and subscribe. Download wherever you get your podcast. and thanks for tuning in. So much to update because UCLA hoops in 23-24 finally got some landscaping changes because of the portal closing. And while I was wondering, all right, who might leave? They had a lot of guys go and declare to the NBA draft. In the end, UCLA is having a bit of an overhaul, even more than we thought. In the end, UCLA is having the likes of Mac Etienne and Abramo Zanka both leave the team. They're in the portal, and they're going to go find playing time elsewhere. It's initially reported, I saw, I believe, late yesterday from the Bruin Report Online about how Zonko is expected with their various sources. And then, after I saw an LA Times article written about Zonka and Etienne leaving. That just means I was wondering how long UCLA would take and what was the holdup when it came to getting a day tomorrow. Why hadn't we heard anything? Why hasn't there been any sort of progress reported? And, well, lo and behold, it became the fact that UCLA needs some spots on the roster, scholarship spots, to open up. What does that mean? Well, now, overall, UCLA needed to open up a big spot, a big man spot, with Etienne, he leaves. That can slide in nicely for a day. Mara, reading the Bruin Report online, even LA Times with Ben Bolch. It, it kind of just seems likely now. that Not that it wasn't likely already, but now the, the spaces are all opening up for Mara and the other Bruins. Like Fibleul, who just, you know, said he's coming about a month ago. And we hadn't heard anything since other than to the other international product. But Zonka leaving... You got the first international product coming in for from Ivo Samovich. You wonder how does Fibleu fit, fit in, listed as a international, an international four-star recruit. So, all right, those are some youngsters coming in. It's sad to see Etienne go, maybe considering he was a big force and you hoped his athleticism would blossom and grow and they'd have so much depth in the front court. And instead, UCLA is going from what is supposed to be one of the the supremely talented bigs in the class of 24, stealing him out of the out of Spain. The other big thing that's being reported and expected, especially initially put out by the Bro Report, was the fact that UCLA is expecting a Dembona and Jalen Clark. And I caught one of those at Dembona interviews, and he had said, hey, I'm leaning heavily towards one way over the other. And he didn't want to make it clear during the interview but it seemed like, hey, I want to make sure I'm not going to sell myself short by saying which way I'm leaning. But considering both Clark and Adem Bona are leaning, heck, even Clark, I see on Twitter, I didn't see his Instagram, but I saw on his Twitter, posting a lot of UCLA things, even something about a degree. So he's posting more things on social media, UCLA, yada, yada, yada. And mind you, with the injuries all along, we were thinking, why would you go? I mean, it's not fun to go take classes, deal with injuries, and do the college ball thing while it is as entertaining to go try out your NBA dreams. It just seemed, one, unfortunate timing for Jalen Clark, and two, for a Dembona who was blossoming into the Pac-12 freshman of the year. How do they grow and turn into NBA players without showing that at the combine because they're hurt, one with a labrum, the other one with a low, lower leg injury in Clark. But that makes UCLA look a lot better next year, although Clark's injury status and availability and effect, effectiveness all remain to be seen in next year's team. Bono should be likely ready for the next season, but that just means, hey, this team might be looking a little bit better. You're taking guys off the roster who weren't maybe expected, who didn't contribute from last year's team as much, right? Etienne had to step up later in the season. Zonka truly didn't find any playing time, and there's a lot of hope for him to grow this year, maybe shooting the basketball, learn the defense that McCronin employs, and find some time on the floor. 
in the end, they're going to go find some playing time elsewhere, we hope, as they just got in under the gun to get into the portal. Because what the portal closing means is you got to throw your name in, and then these kids have all this time to choose where they want to go. That's what the May 11th portal closing date means. And while I didn't think, didn't realize UCLA might have some guys go when I recorded that episode yesterday, it is interesting to see not just one, but two late entries into the portal as Mick Cronin only had a couple from years previous, Sharif O'Neal and then Jake Kaiman, who just transferred again, leaving Wyoming. In the end, it's not the worst thing. UCLA isn't having a big player like a Caleb Love or a Hunter Dickinson. They're not having those guys transfer out. They have the similar type of caliber guys leaving last year's team, going to the draft or graduating, running out of eligibility in some circumstances. But this is a little different, and I think UCLA might benefit from it as we continue on rocking with Locked On UCLA. So what are my expectations for 23 and 24? We're going to talk about that in a moment. But first, you've got to try Built Bars. I've been telling you this all along. I don't know why there's been no comments about it. I don't know why anybody hasn't got to do it. Go get a Built Bar. If you're hungry, like I am starving right now, sitting here in the room, just been a long day traveling, and you're like, hey, what do I need if I'm sitting on the airplane, if I've been just traveling all day? Go get a Built Bar. Just go to your local Walmart, your Sam's Club. Heck, even go get complimentary specialty flavors at Built.com where you can get a four-bar box, a 13-bar box. It's only four grams of sugar, 130 calories, yet 17 grams of protein. What? Just go get one right now. Run to Built. It's healthy. It tastes amazing. 100% real chocolate. Churro. You can go get churro puffs. Brownie batter puffs. You'll thank me later. Go to built.com and get a new one. Cruising on in Locked On UCLA. Second segment here is the Bruins. Well, man, oh, man. Taking a look at what they have roster-wise. They're getting close to filling up the 13 available scholarship spots that they have coming up for the 23-24 season. Remember, just reminding from the first segment, this is only the third and fourth players to transfer out from UCLA. Kaiman, Sharif O'Neal, and then now Etienne and Zonka. And one of the things that the LA Times article points out is even with Clark and Bona returning, UCLA is only going to return 31% of their scoring. Is that going to happen? We'll see. And mind you, those things haven't officially happened yet. They have to withdraw and pull their names out for that to officially happen. Now there's an expectation, not one just to get Mara, two to get Bona, but three to bring back Jalen Clark. Although two of those guys are dealing with injuries and rehabbing longer injuries, one will be ready faster than the other. So again, if Bona and Clark don't return, then they change their minds or the reports end up being changed after it's all said and done. Only 7% of UCLA scoring will return from last year. And again, 30%, even with the Bona and Clark coming, it'll still be a young team with Clark unavailable, one would assume, possibly until the new year in 2024. It it remains to be seen if it's a mid-December or a January, based on what he said at the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year Award presentation to Andy Katz, I believe a a month or two ago when, when I talked about that. So it is important to see how healthy these guys are, how much it They can transition back into game shape. Bona should be a little bit easier since his recovery process is a bit shorter than Clark. But again, you get one of the big bigs from Mara. And now you've got a team with Lazar Stefanovic. You've got three freshmen between the two Williams, Sebastian Mack, Dylan Andrews, Will McClendon. And overall, UCLA has an interesting, interesting team. You know, in terms of, and can't forget Kenneth Nuba, in terms of, of the likes that UCLA will be bad next year, the non-conference could very well be a struggle bus. This could be one of those years similar to the Final Four run. This could be almost similar to the first year of Mick Cronin's tenure where they could basically, in my mind, be vulnerable to an early season at-home mid-major loss. I know there's been reports that they're going to go play some big schools in Atlanta in the Sports Classic in December, but this could be a team that truly struggles in the beginning of the season. This isn't going to be one of those teams that goes and wins, maybe loses two in November, and then just goes plows mostly through the Pac-12 conference and was looking at the end of the regular season as one of the NCAA championship favorites heading into March Madness, only for injuries to pile up and knock the Bruins out last season. This year, if Bona 
and Clark return. That's the caveat. If this is more of a best case scenario, which we've talked about here on Locked On UCLA before, the best case scenario involves the Bruins having some of their better players return, veterans who know the system that can teach, even if they're not on the floor initially. And while you're asking Zonka and Etienne to step up, them leaving, younger talent, guys who might be a little bit better in those spots, maybe more athletic. And then you've got Bolden and Clark to fill those roles that they did last year if they're healthy and ready at a certain point of the season. This could be a second-half turnaround for the Bruins. They might not be good. I know FanDuel and all those things, they've been releasing win, you know, wins or losses. You know, What's the win total for UCLA football next year? Well, when it comes to basketball, this team will be truly unique defensively, you know, it, it, it'll be interesting. If Clark is healthy, Bone is back, Dylan Andrews has some defensive intensity, this could still be a very good defensive team. Now you're losing a Jaime Hawkins Jr., you're losing a, a, a crafty Tiger Campbell, and mind you, I know some of you guys have put in the comments, what's up with Tiger? It just seems like Tiger, from everything that's been reported, he's done, he wants to move on. Maybe McCronin said, I love you, but you've been here five years, four years playing, if you include, don't include his ACL injury year, his true freshman year. So from the guys coming back, we're only expecting Bona and Clark. From what I've read, LA Times, Bro Report, just things I've been seeing, those are what we're expecting. So it will be a young backcourt, could be an older front court. Nuba coming back, you get Bona coming back. Then a unique middle, right? You've got the experiences in Stefanovic. You'll get some intriguing possibilities at the two with the Bleul. I know reading John Rothstein's article, you could even see Stefanovic as a small four in his projected top 45s. But once Rothstein kind of threw it out there that, wait a minute, UCLA might actually be bringing back Bona and Clark. That kind of got the, the brains working. All right, that's good. But then who has to lead? And how do they fill out the rest of the spots to make this team competitive? Well, already by getting Amara, getting a late Fibre who is supposed to be a very good product from overseas, the Bruins are getting talent. But again, I'm going to remain on this point that UCLA is going to sit there and they will not be good in the month of November. And by good, I mean dominant good. They could lose one of those weird early games at home and maybe that winning streak at Poly Pavilion comes to an end earlier in the year, depending on how easy they stack the early season you know, non-conference schedule. Is it all mid-majors? Do they get someone in there? I haven't seen the reports of next year's schedule just yet. But the Bruins, they sit here with a uniquely talented roster. And I was slightly afraid to give them credit before last year's team. I thought they were very young in certain spots, had some guys that needed to step up, and everybody stepped up in every possible way heading into this most recent season, and they played and had a great year. Now more question marks for next year's team. There's no complete gel between all these guys coming in. There's still all this defensive presence that McCronin has to instill in all these players. And it's one thing to be like, all right, we're glad we started the overseas recruitment, but the first guy the UCLA Bruins bring in, he goes overseas. So one wonders what the fit is like for Amara and what's it going to be like for Fibleul. Between those two, it, it's unique to see, all right, they're recruiting overseas, but considering the first one in the Cronin era already left, I just wonder how that plays into the mind or did Zonka just not get it in terms of the defense or, you know, those are all things that needed to change for UCLA. Just finding rosters, who's guys that's going to fit the spots, Mick Cronin in this day and age, you don't got time to build up players as much as you had in years previous, especially with the portal a final year, the COVID year, he wants to get to the, the cream of the crop. He wants to reach the top of the mountain and stop being like, all right, we had the final four and that was a dream one. He wants to earn it and have a good team heading into next year. So this team will be very, very, very intriguing. I just don't think November and December will be pretty for UCLA. They'll be talented and it just depends on how many bad teams they play early. If they're playing a lot of bad teams, they don't test themselves, then all right, they're going to go six and one and handle themselves through the opening month of November, opening three weeks, and set themselves up for an interesting December. But they always play, I believe, that CBS Sports Classic or whatever it's called, in, in as sometimes they play it in Vegas, I think, next year. I've read, I think it's in Atlanta. It just depends how much Mick Cronin stacks the schedule. Are they going to go to 
play in Maryland again, right? Like how they did the last second adding of the schedule going across the country to play Maryland before flying to New York and playing Kentucky. How tough will this non-conference schedule be with a youthful roster? The veterans were either guys that are hurt or guys looking into new roles like Lazar Stefanovic coming over from Utah to UCLA. How does this team gel? How do they mix? And that's just a unique spot. Dylan Andrews is the one, maybe the two, if they go things that way. I think Andrews is the one. Fibleo Ula is the two. And then how it could work, Fibleo is the two. You have Stefanovic is the three. You could have Bona as the four. And Mara, if he officially comes to become a Bruin, you've got a 6'11", 7'3", center. You can almost play like Arizona did last year when – they had their two bigs between Tabellis and Balo. If you go Mara and then a Dambona, UCLA could go play in the post and work themselves the ball. Maybe Stefanovic takes the bulk of the, the jump shots. We'll see who gets the ball in their hands the most. Or is it, let's feed the post as much as humanly possible. That is what UCLA could turn into next season. And that's why it's intriguing. How will they play offensively? They've always had these last few years someone ball dominant shooting the basketball. Turned into Johnny Juzang for close to a year and a half, two years. Jaime Hawkins Jr. was the one who took a bulk of the shots. Then it was Tiger Campbell in reserve or Clark. They had their three point sharpshooter. I just wonder who will be the leading guy in terms of scoring, in terms of taking the shots, who will have the ball in their hands. When Mick Cronin, at the end of games, generally likes to go iso ball in those mismatches down in the post. Is there someone who can hit that mid-range jumper contested, like Juze? Is it someone with footwork, like Hawkes? Who Who is it going to be this year? And at this moment, I'm not entirely sure. We've heard good things about Fibleul, his ability to hit contested jump shots. Mara shows promise and athleticism. You just wonder how he can adapt to the, the college game. And mind you, got to repeat, got to repeat myself here. None of these guys have officially, between Mara, Bona, and Clark, have officially committed to either coming back to UCLA or signing with UCLA. Just Zonka and Etienne's departures have opened up everything in the spots to where everybody's expecting them to come back. All the reports are bringing them back. And now it's just how does this team look? How will they operate? And this moment, I'm not entirely sure. It's a unique one to say the least. But this team, it will be fascinating to talk about for days to come, for the summer, and then heading into the fall before we eventually get into winter and play some basketball. It, you know, it's May. November's only half a year, half, six months. We're, we're already five months in the year, six months away. Let's go. Let's play some basketball. Let's get back to March. Let's have some fun and not be heartbroken again as a UCLA fan. So I hope you guys like that. Tomorrow coming up on Locked On UCLA, we will be talking about if you're an everyday listener, that's right. If you're an everyday listener, come back tomorrow. We'll talk the over-under totals of UCLA's football, UCLA football's projected win total. What is it? We'll talk about it. FanDuel posted some totals. We'll have some fun with it on Friday morning. And then we'll maybe decipher a little more basketball. If there's more news, maybe next year, maybe I can get more thoughts and get more clarity in terms of what I think the team will actually, how they'll play. And then softball's in the first day of the Pac-12 tournament. By the time I finish this episode, they'll either have beaten Arizona or they will have lost considering they're playing at Arizona Stadium with UCLA, the home team, as the host seat. So we'll talk about all those things heading into the weekend. And UCLA fans, as you always know, it's time to get your hands up, Bruins fans. Eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You. See. L.A. U.C.L.A. Fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit, Get some comments. Tell me your thoughts about this basketball team. Tell me if you think I'm crazy, if they're going to play in the low post. Tell me who you think UCLA should go recruit 2024. Go hit the hit the block. Hit Locked On Bruins Twitter. Download the audio. Subscribe if you're on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. It's free wherever you get it. Just thank you for the support. In the meantime, this has been Locked On UCLA. I'm Zach anderson Yoxheimer signing off and saying so long. Go Bruins! Let's go.